Hey, Slanda, y'all. Welcome. Tuesday night, Scotch on the Bayou, and I hope everyone is doing well. It has been a long day, <laughs> and uh, I don't know about you, but I could just uh, enjoy sitting back, having some drams with some friends, and um, relishing these gifts of uh, whiskey that folks have have. Uh, generously shared with me and it's time to drink those samples time to dig into that pile that you have and um pick out some gems that you've been keeping just some I, i've got i've had a menagerie of things tonight that i'm going to share with you so I'm, I'm super excited about that we've already got a party started before before the show ever ever got going i uh, just want to say hey jimmy jazz is in and uh donner past him good to see you friend uh, thanks for for being in. I'm glad you're you're in with us this early, being over on the West Coast as you are. Um, our mess is in. Happy Tuesday, everyone! All the fine folks. Yep, absolutely. Thanks. Um, you're gonna have to let me know what y'all are drinking because I'm I'm gonna live vicariously through uh, all the all the little tiny bottles of whiskey that you all have too. This is gonna be a, a lot of fun. Definitely so. And I've already, oh, look at this. There's already people meeting up. I love it. Um, and seeing everybody. That's super. Uh, Whiskey Wine Trails is here. Tom, good to see you, friend. And Rob, hey, good evening to everyone and you as well, friend. I hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, just some fun stuff. Hey, Mike's here. Mike da -da -da -da. Cheers, everybody. Yes. Thanks for being in. Um, and Bruce is in and yes, already some likes. We can always take the likes. I love, I love it when people like this, but the algorithm loves it even more. <laughs> so yeah, hit, hit, hit it for me. That'd be great. I appreciate all the support. Uh, sure. Kitty meow, my friend. I hope you're doing well and, and having some good drams tonight all lined up for us to, to do. Um, yay. Uh, trooper, you got Tomatoes, cucumbers, and your pepper plants in the ground. Awesome. They're all growing. Yes, still home. Good. Glad you're home. Um, you know, if you have an overabundance of crops, I'll meet you halfway. I'll meet you at the camp. <laughs> and I'll, I'll give you a couple sample bottles for some homegrown Creole tomatoes, <laughs> uh, which is kind of funny um, when you think about, it. like, some folks are still kind of in chilly weather. Uh, we're going to hit 90 this week for sure down here. So it's already getting pretty warm. Look at this. Look at my boo. Ah, uh, Zach, good to see you. Am I? Yeah. All our camp Bayou drammers. <laughs> That's awesome. Good to see you, my friend. I miss you. Mission big time. Um, yeah. Oh, well, good. Glad you got them lined up because we're going to, we're going to go through some cool stuff. I know, I know for sure. And Rickson, hey, awesome. Check out his five minute, I mean, concise, beautiful, um, uh, uh, reviews are just, is awesome. He did Tam do 15 this week. It's spectacular. Um, but yeah, it's it, excited about that. Let me, um, it's a whiskey zone. Let me throw that link in there real quick. I'm going to pop that in there, but yeah, make sure you, you check that out. And he's, he's now a new camp drammer too. <laughs> so thanks Rick. I appreciate the support. Um, yeah, so we're we're going to get into, and Graham's here. Good morning, my friend. Good morning. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to go, I've got six pulled, <clears throat> and we're going to make all, all of them. I'll, again, have a wee bit. Thankfully, no longer on medication, so I'm good to go. Um, but like I said, it's been a long day, so I feel like Lynn's adorableness may ramp, be ramped up by the, by the last dram, so we'll will go with me. What I wanted to, to look at first, um, let me see if I can do this without, I'm just going to kind of put them in this little holder. Yeah, that, that'll work. Is the menagerie of, of the way that they're all sealed. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to get me out of the shot here. There we go. So we've got black electrician tape, red vinyl tape, no, no, no sealer. Um, shrink wrap, which was like hot seal shrink wrap, which was amazing. And then this one is your good old scotch tape. We got some scotch um, sealed up with scotch tape, which I think is hilarious. 
Um, this is another one. I'm not going to hit this one tonight, night, but um, this is another, um, the parafilm. I don't know if Jennifer's on. She and I've been having this discussion. This is, this is kind of my go-to favorite um, way to seal. It's a, it's a product used in grafting plants because it will expand as the plant grows. Um, but it's kind of, kind of sticky, but it has a super seal on it. But I, I just thought it was kind of funny as I looked at all of these samples at the different ways. Now, let me just say the scotch tape version and the, um, the electrician tape version, as well as the nothing at all, all got back from Scotland without any problem. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's, that's a lot of fun to, to kind of figure that part out. Um, goodness. Um, let's see. So, um, this is the first dram I'm going with. Y'all will need to let me know. So our other, so our other, uh, across the, the way, um, uh, regular, I'll call them, <laughs> Uh, Andrew Butler. This was one of the, the samples that he gave me when we were there last summer. And it's not a scotch. It's from France. So all the way around a curveball, right? Um, Northman Cuvée 1110 blended whiskey by Greg from France. Um, oh, actually, I think this is from Greg Whiskey um, studies gave it to him from France. Okay. Well, this is double gifted then if that's the case that Greg whiskey studies gave it to Andrew Butler, who gave me some double gifted. That's even, that's even fancier. <laughs> so we will try a wee bit of this and I'll let you in on the, um, specifics here. Andrew has cool little labels. Um, he has a copy um, of the reprint of the actual label. And then he puts all the information. So this one's at 48 ABV. I can't be straight here. My left and my right. Um, so yeah, Northman Kube. So. Mm -mm -mm. It's a blend and I get some, I'm pretty sure there's some grain. I did not have a minute to research this one. Um, but we'll have to look at that. Mm. I definitely get some grain on it. Now, now it makes me want to go Google it. <laughs> but we'll, we'll do that. I'll put that in the notes when we find out something. Mm. Um, so let's see what folks are drinking. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Trooper. Zach Andrews, what up, Hama? <laughs> oh, all well in the bank. So you wouldn't call them samples, but you have 12 boxes of four ounce bottles that you've used to library. Ah, okay. Bottles you've gotten. Always um, have a bottle picked out to revisit things. Yeah, those four ounces are nice. Right when you get close to the heel of a bottle and you just don't want to kill it because you kind of want to hang around and let. Yeah, I've, I've done that <laughs> I, mainly with two ounce bottles, but the four ounces and I need to do another glass run. That's a really good point. So, yeah. And, and my my buddy Kevin um, dropped off some some heels the other day. Uh, glass whiskey in bottles heels anyway. He'll get a kick out of that. Um, but yeah, I need to, I need to re redo those because, you know, I'm not precious about these things. It's just, I, I've collected them. I, I like from my notes in uh, the show description, I'm well over 200 now, y'all. That's just, it, that's a sin. That's, that's a gluttonous sin to have that many samples, but it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to catalog them. And then what I want to do, because I'm weird like that is I want to like pull certain ones together, you know? So say you have four spring banks, one's a single nation, a single cast nation, one's an SMWS, 
one's, you know, another IB and one's from Spring Bank. You know, how cool to be able to compare those. Um, I think I've got five of the vintage Bob Blairs that I want to do a whole sweet tasting on. You know, that kind of stuff is what I'm doing. Um, Aaron is another one um, between, I think, uh, I'm pretty sure, Graham, you gave me an Aaron. Um, I want to see if it was an Aaron 25, maybe. Um, I know Andrew gave me an Aaron. I've got one from the Scotch for Dummies. Plus, Kevin gave me a couple of um, different errands I'd never, ever seen. So that's another kind of cross-tasting of different um, expressions that I want to, to try. So the nose on this, um, you know, y'all, I'm going to have to look it up for a little bit. Um, but I also want to see who else is in. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah. Um, oh, Graham's doing all kinds of cool tastings. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, I'm not going to look that up. I'll put it in the notes afterwards. But it's it's almost like it's a little soapy, like um, like a verbena soap. That kind of um, leafy, slightly citrusy, but with a little soapiness. I don't know. This has got to have green in it. It's got a whole different kind of non-scotch taste, <laughs> but very interesting. So get the, the dryness from the cuvee, very sweet on the front end, just a slight warmth, no pepper or real heavy spice um, on the finish. Um, yeah. Very, very different. And let's see where my coins are. I'm going to cover these up so I can go back and visit. Yeah, and it was um, at 48 ABV. Tastes as, as it would for that, for sure. Almost a, a, little, a little astringent, but and kind of oaky. Kind of that definitely oaky, but very light. I would imagine that was some type of bourbon matured whiskey for sure. Um, yeah, so let's see what all what all are y'all drinking? And let me know what y'all have got plans. Um anytime anytime um we can uh live vicariously through I keep saying that word vicariously, but um, if you follow Graham on Facebook, um, in the bar flies or whatever, he's always showing the really cool stuff that they're doing. I think he just had Glasgow whiskey club. I want to say, um, isn't that right, Graham? So no telling what wonderful, um, uh, drams they had for that. Um, awesome. The Andalusia sample that I gave you. So, um, is that the Paladura? Cause I'm trying to remember which one. Um, that's their first Andalusia. Oh, boo. Mm. You're in for a treat. You are in for a treat. Um, yeah. <laughs> so funny thing about that one. Um, and, and <laughs> Zach will kind of, um, giggle about this. Cause I had to send a text to him and Margot last night. I got the most lovely email. Um, yesterday from this gentleman who I shared samples with um, in Scotland uh, when I went over for the Glasgow Whiskey Festival in November. And when you give samples, you just, I mean, this is my attitude about it. You're gifting, like, I want someone to just enjoy this. And like, I really liked it. Or I thought it was interesting. And especially if you don't think someone has access to something, that's a beautiful reason to share a sample, right? And like you pour a bottle and it could be this much or it could be this much. I mean, that is not a whole lot, but this is the whole sample that of this last one might tell you how precious it is, but we're, we're going to have some of that tonight. I may not drink all of it, even though it's that much, but you know, 
you you enjoy it and you want to give that, but you don't really expect a lot in return. I I never give samples out saying, well, you better get back to me on how you thought about that. I'd love to hear it, but I also know people probably have a lot of samples. And what I want them to do is just go, oh man, this was a good one from Leanne. I enjoyed that. And I'm good with that. So I didn't, I when I gave samples out, I never, you know, I want to give a little bit of what we have over here. Over here being particularly single malts. Um, so when I go to Scotland I, and I took, um, well, I took the Art in America back over because <laughs> I figured, well, if it's U.S. only, maybe some folks over there didn't get to have it. Um, actually, a lot of folks actually did get to have it. <laughs> so that, that was fine. That was OK. But then um, but then I took some single malts and um, the Andalusia Paladura was one of them. Um, there was a Stranahan single barrel that was an Oloroso sherry cask, I believe. That was another one. And then I was part of an all-woman pick committee uh, for a Maker's Mark um, private select bottle for a local um, liquor store called Hocus Pocus. And so that was one that I bottled up in samples. And I just went over there with a ton of little samples and wanted people to share. So I gave this person the Paladur and Delusia, the Strand Hands and the Maker's Mark and said, you'll never get these over here. <laughs> I know you got a million whiskeys, but I hope you enjoy these and just called it a day. Well, that was November. Certainly did not expect in April to get a lovely email from this gentleman saying, it was great meeting you. I really have enjoyed. I shared this with some of my friends who are in the distilling, you know, it was distillery. And we were really impressed with that Andalusia Paladura. And I'm, I'm super excited about basically paraphrasing that he was really excited about what the U S is coming up with, with single malts, you know, and it's not in outside of bourbon. And I was like, well, that's very nice. And then I realized who it was from and it was from Ralphie. <laughs> and I, I was a little stunned and like terribly excited that Ralphie sent me this beautiful little sweet note, you know, um, thanking me for three samples that I gave them in passing and um, that he enjoyed them. I mean, certainly didn't expect that, but what a guy, you know, and that kind of made me think too. Someone even like Ralphie can experience something new through a sample. It's not, I mean, he's got so much whiskey and he has access to all kinds of whiskey sitting there in the middle of, you know, uh, ground zero of all the Scotch world, Irish, everything that he can get there. But I knew he was going to have that Texas 50%, you know, Texas um, barley whiskey. And so I just was really happy that I was able to give him an experience that he wouldn't even have, even though he has so much access. So all that to say, um, cheers to Ralphie for, for your mama raised you right. <laughs> no, I'm serious. It was just really cool to get that. And he's just a sweetheart and it was so nice to meet him. And, and he's, he's definitely, a, a that, that was really kind of cool. I have to say, um, yeah, uh, Zach's not a friend, a uh, fan of the parafilm. It is kind of hard to get off, um, and pull off of there, um, from time to time, but you know, so Fraser Thistle, for those who know, um, Fraser Richards, um, over in Scotland, he gave me this, uh, y'all tiny and thankfully people put their names on stuff, put your name on your samples. Um, Annandale six year 2015 vintage single cask 597, and it was uh the whiskey barrel uh Fraser Fraser Thistle, he goes by, or Fraser Richards. Um, yeah, and I remember, let me like show you this one. So, this is what this is Annandale. I've never had Annandale, but I want to maybe say I have. 
Graham, didn't we have an Annadale when we went to the whiskey shop in Sterling? Wasn't there like the Man of Swords or the Man of Words? One of one of those. That's an Annadale. And I think we had a, a, a sample of that when we were there. But um, so Graham says that um, that you seal all your stash bottles, especially old bottles with parafilm, is scientifically proven um, that way to um, as a way to, I'm guessing, to block out um, oxygen. Oh, wow. So this is a Madeira cask. Is that right? No. No, wait. I don't know what this is. The next one's Madeira. I don't know what this is. But it sure doesn't smell like six years. You know, like sometimes young youngins can be a little. <sighs> oh, goodness. This smells. This smells like it would be some kind of sherry. I mean, the color color's a little deeper than it would be if it was just. If it was just a bourbon matured, but six years, goodness. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, aren't they? <laughs> um, he he uh, definitely gifted us uh, 12 samples of, of those sweet little bottles like that. It was amazing. And I'm slowly but surely working my way through them. Um. Yeah, I, I really think the parafilm is the way to go. Um, absolutely. Oh, Sugar Kitty puts out two, two ounces. And that way you get your four and you can all, um, you can keep them separately. So like you can archive that one two ouncer and then sample out some of that two, the other two ouncer. That's pretty smart. I like that idea. Um. Rob's got an Aaron 12 cast drink Palo Cortado. Yum. That sounds delicious. Yeah, so this, this has got some smoke on it. That's kind of crazy. Mm -mm -mm. Definitely has smoke or peat. I was not expecting that. Um, I barely sniffed that bottle just open to kind of gauge what because most some of these are peated. And I was like, well, no, I'll do that one before the Smith's Ardemarkin, but what am I kidding? That Ardemarkin is going to be peated too. This is a nice little campfire. It's a little hot, little, little young, sprightly, um, little hot on the finish, but nice, clean, uh, sweet taste. I don't know if it's sherry, if it may be bourbon. I have to look through. That's not on. That's not on our thing, but man, Frazier, this is tasty. Hopefully, Frazier will be, I'll, I'll have to tag him on <laughs> um, and let him know I finally got to this, um, to this ground. Mm. The sweetness is kind of like a confection sugar, almost like a toasted marshmallow. So you have a little bit of smoke from that. And to me, this is more smoke than peat, although... The finish comes out with more peat at the end, I think. I'm just going to take a little bit of water on this one because it is almost, what, almost 58? No, 54. No, yeah, 59, 7. Yeah, so I'm just going to take a wee bit of water on that. Mm -mm -mm. So, Rob, I'm guessing that's the Aaron 12. Has a whole lot going on. It sounds like a song. Don't, don't, don't. Got a whole lot going on. Don't, don't, don't. Aaron 12. No. There's a reason I don't sing for a little <laughs> Oh, man. Now I got a lot of nuttiness on this after putting the water on it. So that makes me kind of think it might be an Oloroso. Interesting. I'm going to go back, do a little digging on what these are.
See if I can put any more information and I'll list that in the comments. Mm, that's really pretty tasty. Definitely having the residual smoke going. Mm. Sure having a whiskey, not a whiskey. So what flavor, what that is. <laughs> tell, us, tell us which one you're having. Um, so, yes. See, sharp eyes I have. Cadenhead, uh, Glasgow Whiskey Club. Cadenhead tasting, including including just a 37-year-old club orangey. Wow. 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 Uh, my last drown is going to beat that by three years. Just saying. It's a big, it, it's it's a fancy dram, um, but 37-year Glenmorangie, I bet, I can just imagine, like, the depth of that. I would think that would have a lot of depth. Yum. That sounds so good. Um, so, yeah, Bruce, tell us what you're drinking. Are you drinking that Benny's Artist Blend? Um, yeah, so the, the Palo Dura was the sample that you had from Andalusia, um, just finishing dinner. I know. Mm. Let that salmon, you know, that's going to actually complement it pretty well because of how kind of sweet and smoky that one is. I think it, I think that one's kind of smoky. Eh, maybe not. It may not be smoky. It may just have a nice, I'm trying to remember now. I've had a couple of Andalusias here lately. Um, yeah. So, I know, and Tom, you've got your trip coming up in August. Um, good morning <laughs> to you on the other side of the world, Bradley. Good to see you. I know you may not be having uh, breakfast whiskey, but um, you'll have to let us know what you're what you're doing and what you're drinking. And oh my word, look at who is here also in the middle of the night, Rachel. <laughs> good to see you. Um, uh, how do you remember um, which they are? Because um, when you get drams from people, oh, well, I immediately write them down. That's for sure. Like um, I wrote, so like on this particular one from Andrew Butler, I literally, after I got them, I wrote his name on all of them. But it's really important to put it in there for sure. Um, but I love this. You make, uh, you end up with stacks of them and then you put a blind uh, tasty night um, all the time, which is absolutely perfect to do that. I love it. I miss you, friend. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I really do. I do miss you, Rachel. And I, and and it looks like March, your March um, uh, session of Isla Whiskey Academy was off the charts. Um, and I will, I, I bragged on you a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about that because your the March class got to have the first uh, the first to sell it off of the Port Ellen stills. And that's just, that's like, that's historic. And that doesn't happen anywhere else, but there, you know, with Rachel. So um, anyway, back to our regular program. Um, so that was, that one. so third round, we're here to hit that one. Yeah, Zach, that Paladuro was money. Um, I got a buddy coming in in a couple of weeks. Dustin, he might pop on tonight. Um, and he's, he grabbed one of the distillery Oloroso hand, um, pour ones. I'm super excited about that one. So this one, third dram, yeah, I need to get that smoke. I should have grabbed some crackers or something. Mm. Third dram is another one that was Haley here and just handed to me during Glasgow Whiskey Festival weekend. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. Um, this is from Rob H. over um, in um, Scotland. So um, I think he might be in England. Um, Arden Merkin 10.22 Madeira. Yum. Um, and it's interesting because I want to show you like how he, how he did. I so need to get um, a manicure. So again, Rob H., but check this out. And he put middle. And I'm, I don't know exactly what that means, but I'm going to hypothesize that this was the middle of the, of the overall, um, 
of the overall. Uh, thank you. The Cracker Man just showed up. <laughs> Thanks, honey. Um, I think it's like the middle of the bottle instead of like, you know, the neck pour. Um, that's what I'm going to think that is. So while I munch, yeah, I need to get that smoke out of my mouth. This is at, um, hmm, I'm going to go with 58.2. It could be 50.2 or 58.2. It's kind of hard to see. Mm. So I'm going to pour a little bit of that. Like I said, a little dab will do you tonight. Mm. Oh, man. Madeira. Mm, mm, mm. Hey, Stacy, Four Leaf Whiskey's in. Hello, my friend. Good to see you here. Let us know what you're drinking. Um, this has got Madeira all over it. Uh, not even a whiff of smoke. Certainly not up against what I just had. Just um, very bright. The sweetness is more like fresh fruit or maybe like a, a plum or an apricot. Not really apple pear, not that bright. I'm going to go with a 58 <laughs> after what it just did to my nose. I'm going to go with the 58.2 instead of the 50.2. Oh, Rob, this is... Lovely. All right. Definitely 58.2. Wow. You kind of get that mid-range sweep, but it's almost like a, a cream pudding. Not quite banana pudding. A little tropical, but not really banana but almost like a like a vanilla pudding, kind of creamy like that, with a good bit of heat at the end. And maybe that's where some smoke is coming in. I don't think it's residual after drinking that, uh, after eating a piece of that cracker and a couple sips of water. But it's funny because some Arden Americans... When, when Jennifer and I did that review on one, we didn't really get any smoke on the nose and bam, it showed up on the finish. And I kind of found that to be the case with them. It's like stealth peat. <laughs> wow, that is very lovely. I have no idea how. So that one I'll also research for its time in the cask. And um, but that Madeira is lovely. I'm going to pop a little drop or two of water. Oh, so he turns up periodically at the club with his latest bottlings. That's pretty cool. Yeah, super nice. He is a total rock star, but nice and approachable and... Yeah, just, I was, I was pretty, I was really pretty impressed with Ralphie. <laughs> and just, you know, very sweet of him to send a note, which I, that was really nice. Hmm. Uh, uh, uh. So I love, I love Graham talking Irish with, with Stacy. I just, this is so, this is just so awesome, y'all. I love it. I just love it. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. So back to my, back to our, our second dram there. Yes. Two styles of man of swords, man of words, Rabbi Burns, um, unpeated man of swords, Robert Bruce, peated. 
Um, and we tried the unpeated. Okay, at the Curly Coo. Okay, I knew it was one of the other two. Often finished in wine and red in uh, sherry casks. See, after all those samples we had that day, <laughs> I still remembered that. <laughs> I would say it was, and, and you still remembered that. So that's a really big deal. Okay, so here's Mike's whiskey with an E. So he's got a Four Roses small batch. Very nice. Uh, uh, uh. Hey, Peter, good to see you. Thanks for being in. Hope you did well. Oh, yes, something very nice. So my folks just turned 82. So yes, we'll have to toast to your dad with a birthday coming up. That's a big one. Or, you know, you need to tell him... <laughs> You need to tell them, and, and oh, and one week later, you're 50. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. So let me tell you, you're not going to be 50. You're going to be 25 on each leg, and your daddy's going to be 40 on each leg. My my great aunt Vera was very adamant that she was not 88. She was 44 on each leg. And I was like, you know, if that works, I'm all for it. So think about that. You're, tw you're going to be 25 on each leg. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Mm. Uh, I'm definitely. Um, mm, mm, mm. Catching up on. Uh, see, Jimmy, Jimmy, you had me at 58. You, you knew 58 too. Thanks. I'm going to mark that a little bit better. So I'll remember next time. Oh my goodness. Great to see everybody. So, um, tasting notes. I love this. Thank you for saying this. The Andalusia seems dusty, smoky, but not peat. Pleasantly sweet. Stone fruits. Yep. Apricot, peaches. Delish. It is so good. So that, the Paladuro is made with barley from the Paladuro County or area up in the Panhandle of Texas. Um, which is about the only place that barley would probably grow in Texas. Because up around Lubbock, um, Amarillo, up, up that way. That's about as cold as it's going to get. See? <laughs> oh, man. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, look, you, uh, you should be the queen of the fan club at this point. Um, <laughs> the Killowin cult. I love it. Um, and that's another thing we need to talk about on that bottle of port that you sent me. I cannot wait to get into that one. That's for sure. Um, lovely. So Tim Donner Pass has got a four-year-old peated Ben Nevis and a Kalila Signatory 100 Imperial Proof. Interesting. Um, was uh, the Kalila's Instant Love. I'm um, gonna take a little time with the Ben Nevis, then, huh? Well, the Ben Nevis seems a little, little, little uh, like a young in there, you know, at four years. So, uh, man, but that Kalila, at that proof, mm, that sounds great. Um, <laughs> so I, I mentioned you, and I evidently Dustin called you up, and uh, <laughs> but yeah. Um, the, uh, if you weren't, if you didn't catch it earlier, um, I can't wait to let Ty know how much Ralphie enjoyed the Paladura sample that I gave him. I got a, a really sweet email from him letting me know just how impressed they were. So I think, I think Ty would get a kick out of that, sending him that message for sure. Uh, can't wait to see you next week. Um, going to be soon. Excited. Oh, yeah. So this Madeira... <laughs> This Madeira is so, so very nice. So very nice. Um, again, that's the 10.22 uh, Ardna Merkin. So we're getting there. Y'all, I got three more, <clears throat> but they'll go fast. So, okay. So I know, Graham, you know this guy. Um, uh, when we, we got to Mark and I got to the pot still. Um, Roy had put the word out with the barflies that we were in town and um, there was a bevy of folks there. And this lovely individual who I just think the world of, um, Carlos, <laughs> Scotch tape, I love it. Um, when I saw him again, he was there that first night. 
Um, and he laughed about, um, so if you saw the, the show I did with Roy when we were over last summer, he like pulled out his, 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 his fanciest, um, most indulgent whiskeys. And one of which was the Brora 35, I believe that was his birthday um, bottle. And they were all blind. I didn't know what anything was. And <laughs> Carlos doesn't say, hey, Leanne, I'm Carlos. I just walk up and he goes, your face when you had that Brora 35 was just priceless. And like, it was the best thing I've ever had. <laughs> it was, it was a moment. How can I say? So uh, Carlos is just, you can't not smile with this guy. He's just effervescently wonderful. Um, so fast forward a few more months and I'm there for the Glasgow whiskey festival. And he hands me this. Um, and, and I love the way that it's strange. Ardna Merkin, uh, ask Carlos about it. <laughs> uh, ask Carlos what it is. So I will have to find out the details from him. And I, Oh, wow. <laughs> um, because he was like, this is the strangest art and I've ever had. And I really want to know what you think about it. Well, I have to say, I was like shoving samples and everything in my bags to when I was packing. And this actually ended up in my liquids bag on my carry on. And I forgot it. I had it in there for a little bit. So I have it. I rescued it. It's now going in my Alcavite glass. And the first whiff was a bit strange, as he said. So, yeah, let's look. Let's look and see what else we have. Huh. All right. I'm going to let that sit for a second so I can look. Um, mm, um, so Graham said he had an amazing range of warehouse cast temples at the distillery um, last week. Some experimental going on and some of the Sauternes finish. Ooh, that sounds lovely. I'm all about the Sauternes, that's for sure. Oh, Tom, thank you so much, friend. Oh, I appreciate that. And I love it how everybody, <laughs> everybody decides they want to come and visit and, um, you know, be, be part of this. So thank you very much. I, I appreciate it. I really do. That's really sweet. Um, mm, mm, mm. hey, Nate's in. Uh, uh, uh. This, it's got a real doughy, almost like when I smelled it in the little sample bottle, almost got like a pine tar note, which was my reaction of whoa. Um, but now. Now I'm getting a real sourdoughy kind of um, bread starter maltiness. Interesting. Mm. So Peter is finishing a flat Coke. Lovely. Um, with the dark rum. Okay. Y'all have got some, y'all really got some distilleries going on out there. I, I want to dig into more Delbach um, for sure. So between between you and um and and Tom, I'm gonna have to talk about that because we get that many here. It's an odd mouthfeel, kind of um, it's got a little menthol kind of thing going, and like buttered pecan, uh, very creamy. I mean, that didn't make sense. Creamy and menthol. But the menthol's kind of on a little bit of the finish. Pete and smoke are showing up. It's almost, there's almost like this little plasticine thing going too. <laughs> this is so odd. I would never peg this as an Arden Merkin, except on the finish. The finish is more Arden Merkin than the front front part of the taste. That is so odd. I will definitely post what this gem is. 
but pretty hot. So I would say it's at least 55 or better. Yeah, it smokes a little ashy on the back end. But the sweet the sweetness is it is kind of creamy. It's not like that vanilla pudding earlier, but it's it's almost got a buttery note to it and a dryness like I get from pecans. Um that's really that is a strange Ardner Merkin. Um, so I will have to get the details from Carlos. But thank you, Carlos. I finally had it. I like it. It's an odd bird, but I like that. Um, I'm all about odd stuff. Life's too short to be boring. Um, yeah. Mm, that was really tasty. So I'm going to have another bit of cracker here. Um, and see, ah, see what else is going on. Um, just amazing. Um, mm, mm, mm. uh, wow. Nate, goodness. A 15 bottle blind share this week. Surprise winners were an Isla bourbon cherry cast and L the elements of Isla. Mm, yum. How cool to do. Uh, a 15 bottle blind, a 15 bottle blind bottle share. That's very cool. So folks get together and uh, see Dustin's coming in town in a couple of weeks and our little group gets together and we pool our money to do like a bottle. But, and we've actually done a blind with that group before too, which is a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, I love the idea of just bringing blind samples um, for everybody to share. That's really pretty cool. I love that idea. See, great stuff. Mm, love it. Um, uh, so the Phoenix Scottish Games, uh, they had a tasting. Ah, dang it, you missed it. That's okay. There's always next year. Um, and sometimes, you know, you probably may have better whiskey at your house than you do some other things like that. Um, yay. I love it. Uh, let's see. Hey. Hey, my boo. Mark JG's in. Um, so the strangest Ardna Merkin. Oh, it, oh, the Ardna Gherkin. Is this the one, the pickle one? Huh. I wonder if that's what this is. Uh, the Ardna Gherkin. Mm, interesting. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Trooper, you don't have any Ardna Merkin? But, what? We, that, what? You're too close to me not to have any Ardna Merkin. What you talking about? You're right down the bayou, Sha. We got to we got to rectify that situation for sure. Um, goodness, uh, 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 it's so cool. Good to see. Um, so the latest, uh, Ralphie's latest bottling was a cast drink Ardna Merkin. Cool. Mm mm mm. <laughs> Rum makes the Coca-Cola go down better. I totally understand. Totally understand. Mm. Okay. My buddy, way up north, mm. who has evidently a heat uh, shrink wrap system here. I hope I won't kill myself here with this letter opener. Chad Anderson, my buddy. SMWS 27.103 Fishing Boats in a Campbelltown Harbor. Y'all, 27. Y'all know what that is. That'd be the spring bank. Mm, mm, mm. 12 year refill bourbon barrel distilled March 31, 2000. 50.4 ABV. Yeah, there we go. And a kid, look at that, Chad Anderson. He put, <laughs> I love it. So let's try that in my whiskey cast. Oh, Mark, um, who I got to meet in Canada. 
Oh, man. What is the smell? Now, I'm not giving this any air, right? I'm just like pouring it, smelling it. But it's been trapped in that little bottle and I'm liberating it. You get a brine. I'm, I'm almost getting... I am going to do a quick... Let's... Let's look and see what this is. S N W S twenty seven dot one oh three. Google is an amazing thing. <laughs> um, which is well, we already well, he said it was a bourbon refill, twelve year bourbon. Fishing boats. I mean, I get, I get a lot of, I get marine, uh, well, let me say this. I get salt, like sea spray, not so much marine or salinity, if that makes sense. Oh, man. And get, um. There's a little bit of a tropical note on it. Zach Andrews, this would be right up your alley, boo. This is, this is, this is bourbon matured peated loveliness right here in this goodness gracious super clean nice nice um there's a nice balance there's there's just a hint of smoke um when more well i would say more peat than smoke wow um But that tropical part's coming back on that finish a little bit. More of like um, like a mango kind of pineapple-y. Not really banana. Um, it's got an underlying vanilla, but it's not real oaky at all. At 12 years, you would think not. Wow, I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna have to have a little bit more of that and pour near enough because I want to put some water on this one. Mm -hmm. Graham, I totally agree. We've done it a couple of times, but I'm up for it anytime Stacy is. <laughs> um, definitely so. We have so much fun. Um, I did the latest one was. I was going through a scotch flight on her channel. So, um, for sure, check out and we need to make sure. I think I've got uh, four leaf whiskey. We got to. Pretty sure I have. Do I have it? Do I have it? Uh, 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 da, da, da. I thought I had your link really close here. Um, but yeah, four leaf whiskey. Check her out. Subscribe. Impress your friends with uh, Irish by learning stuff on her channel. <laughs> mm. Wow. Chad, this is a banger. Again, that's 27.103 fishing boats in a Campbelltown uh, harbor. And I've been, I've been, I've seen that harbor. I can imagine a fishing boat on there. This tastes a whole lot better than the deck of that fishing boat. Well, I can promise you that. But it's it's very Campbelltown. Um, you've got an, a, a, a sneaky, almost underlying smoke kind of um, peat there that isn't um, overpowering the sweetness and the lightness of this bourbon matured um, dram. So, slightly mineralic. Not as much as Ardenamericans usually are. Um, they're more like 
stone um, to me, like really, um, I, not that you go around or eat, you know, licking on a rock lately, but, but that, you know what I'm getting, I'm not, and somewhat chalky um, on that part of it, but the Camel Town to me is more, um, I guess, marine or sea spray kind of salt than um, pure salinity or ocean water. Ah, mm. uh, man, oh man. Mm. So Graham, did, have you gone to Ireland yet or you're going? I think you're, you are, you've got something planned to go over there, don't you? Or did I miss it already? Water, water's lovely with this too. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Chad, thanks. Thanks again for that, friend. Camp drummer, buddy of mine. Sans mm. Wow. Super. Y'all, I'm having fun. <laughs> I hope y'all are having fun. Oh, yay. Rick, and subscribe. I'm assuming to Stacy's channel. Good deal. So, last dram. This wee dram. So, just so you know, this is what was given to me. It was not full. I would not have accepted it if it was full because I have to sleep. <laughs> and I have, to, I have to have a conscious and sleep. And I would I could not have taken that much of this, um, this elixir. But um, most of y'all tuned in. Um, oh, wait, before we get there. Rob, Rob is finishing with um, a peat bomb. Signatory Bunahaven. Ah, Steosha. Five year, 59.7. Yum, yum. Mm, that sounds good. That sounds real good. Can almost taste that like Pete on that. Um, so the big show that we I say the big show, the show that my buddy Kevin uh joined me with, um, where we killed a bunch of his kind of unicorn whiskeys. Um he, he's such a generous soul and his, um, bye Zach. Thanks friend. Love you. Hug your family for me. Um, he, he's just, he's just a lovely guy and he's very generous and we geek over whiskey and that's lovely. And he had given me this sample and I was like, Oh wow. I'm not pouring all of it tonight, Kevin. Um, but I am pouring it tonight. And he was over a couple of weeks ago. I said, why do you still have this? I'm like, I'm saving it. I really want to savor it. I want to be mindful about it. Hey, he's here. <laughs> he's here. Awesome. Mr. BR Scott. I'm talking about you so you can listen to it live and then replay it. Oh, man. Um, I don't want any of the vapors to get out. So he was chastising me because I had not just, you know, had the sample that he gave me. And the sample is Lafroig, a 40 year old, 42.44. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna savor it. I want everybody to get something in your glass because we're going to toast Kevin because on Friday, on Friday, his baby boy was born. And so he's got this absolutely precious little girl and now he has a little boy and he and his wife, his wife's doing super, which we're really thankful for that. But we want to toast Kevin and his family and just say thank you. And I cannot think of a better way to do it than with a 40 year old Lafroy that you gave me, friend. So cheers, Slajava to you and your family. And I really do appreciate this. And I haven't even had it yet. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's divine. Wow. It tastes as old. It tastes, that's, that's dusty, musty, um, books in a library where the door's been closed and a library off a Dunnage, uh, warehouse. Holy moly. Um, 
the peat in this is a kiss of an element. It is, it is not, it's, it has mellowed out so long in that cask. This is not woody. It's not lumber yard sitting in that for that long. This is, this is definitely, this is a treat. Thank you so much, Kevin. <laughs> mm. It has a definite, um, mm. yeah, that's a, that's a good point. And pretty apropos considering that, that Barry's leaving Lafroig to, to do some other cool stuff, no doubt. Um, it's been there since 2011, started as a malt man, you know, I, and I love that you can, you can document across the industry, those who started rolling a barrel that end up very well could have been, end up running the whole distillery. So that's, that's really pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, so Graham has one day, one day. I would say life should <laughs> open, open the bottle. <laughs> I think that's the one that you were telling me about, but the 40 year old Lafroy 1960. Wow. That's, that's before me or you boo. I would say I'm just, and if it's not before you just take it. Oh. Kevin, this definitely has, a, a, I would say a twang to it. It's got some, different kind of tastes I'm trying to put my, put words to. Mm. That's one that you just kind of want to let sit for a while. I'm going to cover that glass up because I want to smell what that looks, I want to see what that smells like in the morning after, after, that's amazing. Yeah. So, you know, I love the fact that you pu pulled your samples out. We talked about sharing samples with people that you think may have all the whiskey that they can never drink, but you're giving them an experience, right? Um, I just want to thank Andrew and Fraser and Rob and Carlos and Chad and Kevin again for all of these drams um, and sharing them with me. And we'll, we'll keep doing these because I think it's, it's good to be able to go through things that we're, I mean, I'm never going to get a bottle of all of this, right? But I got to experience it. And that again is what the beauty and the power of sharing samples is all about. Giving someone an experience, sharing yourself and your personality by sharing your whiskey. It's always so super um, to do that. Um, yes, Bessie, that, those, that's Bessie's, Wow. You're right. That 1960 Lafroy is Bessie's. That's Bessie's uh, spirit. Wow. That's a great. When you do crack it open, just remember who your friend is in Louisiana. That's all I'm saying, right? <laughs> um, I, I would, from one strong woman um, in the spirit of Bessie, I would, I would, I would definitely love to enjoy some of that for sure. Um, so next week, um, we're going to be celebrating Earth Day and talking about some sustainability. You know, things have kind of changed and we got want to take care of Mother Earth and all those things. Some stuff that's happening at some of the distilleries is really pretty cool. Um, some of these folks are very adamant about making sure they don't uh, tread too harshly on the world while they make really good whiskey. So we'll talk about that. Um, and then we'll have one more show after that. And then I'm going to take a summer break. Um, work wise, you know, we have to pay for whiskey some way, right? Work wise is, um, uh, pretty heavy for a little bit because we're down a person, um, at our office and we'll, we'll have them back soon enough, but, uh, we're, things are pretty crazy. Um, it's already hot y'all. It's going to be 90, 32 Celsius, um, here this week. So, um, things are getting pretty warm. Um, I am going to be going to um, Andalusia and still Austin in August. 
which is kind of crazy because it's hotter than hell in August in Texas. Um, so we'll, we'll do some fun stuff there, but uh, I need to take some brain time. And it'll be fun. We will be doing a show on um, once a month, though, while we're on break. So it's not going to be a total. We're just not going to be on every Tuesday night. So um, looking at doing some daytime Sunday afternoon. So most, um, some more of our friends over across um, the waterway could um, join us and be part of the conversation too. So more about that later. Um, but yeah, we're going to, we're going to say goodnight. Um, I'm going to go back to this Madeira um, Arden American that was just, wah, Rob, friend. Mm, thank you for that. I want to see. Um, Oh, yes. One of my examples for sure. Um, I'm glad you were able to get there. Another place not so easy to get to, right? Um, but I'm really glad you were able to get to that for sure. Um, the Rob, perfect. That's a beautiful, um, that would be really good li uh, blind to do a Buna 12 and a Buna cast strength. You could probably tell because of the, the difference but it still would be interesting to see. That's for sure. Um, definitely, definitely. Uh, uh, uh. Would be so cool. Um, yes, tomorrow. I know this is going to be another fabulous one, just like the one at Rasse was. Roy will be at Dornick Castle. Um, uh, will it be at Dornick? I would imagine the castle or at the distillery. Um, yeah, <laughs> internet is iffy at best up there in my um my way of seeing for sure james dude what is it four o'clock in the morning uh <laughs> yes sunday will be a much more palatable time for you to tune in but thank you for being here on on our on our tail end of here um i hope you're doing well buddy um sanjavan all of that um uh, but yeah so we're gonna say good night tonight and um uh, we'll be back on Tuesday to talk about sustainability, some really cool things that folks are doing um, in um, in making whiskey without, you know, being too bad on Mother Earth and those kind of things. Um, thanks all for being here. I appreciate it. I hope you had fun and we'll see you next week. Slanji y'all. <laughs>